Welcome to Bible 180, Amos. Amos is a shepherd from Judah sent to prophesy against the northern kingdom of Israel. He prophesies during the reign of Jeroboam II, a wicked but successful king. It's a time of material prosperity, but also of great abuses. The rich are exploiting the poor, and Amos starts by making a geographical spiral, prophesying against neighboring countries like Damascus, Tyre, and Moab for idolatry, slavery, and betrayal. Then he circles in on Judah and Israel and condemns them for the exact same sins. Yahweh says, I was up front with you about the expectations, advantages, and consequences of our tree. Now your disrespect and your disregard have forced my hand. I'm taking away your luxuries. I'm gonna destroy your permanent homes along with your summer homes. You who put your feet up demanding more wine will be thrown out by your ears. It's not like I didn't warn you. I sent you drought and plagues much like I did the Egyptians when I rescued you from them. But you have persisted in wanton disobedience. Therefore, I hate your religious assemblies. I despise your sacrifices and your worship songs hurt my ears. So let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. I will wash the land clean and purify it of its wickedness and get rid of you in the process if I have to. Woe to you who lounge on fine beds, drinking wine by the bullfuls when you should be mourning the sin and evil that pervades your land. Yahweh shows Amos his intended punishment. Option a is a devastating locust plague, but Amos cries, O oh Lord, please forgive. How can Jacob stand? He is so small, and the Lord relents. Option B is judgment by fire, but Amos again intercedes. Finally, the Lord shows Amos a plumb line, which is like a level, to fix the crooked nation. Yahweh will level out his people, including their high places, which are such an abomination. The high priest of Bethel, which is an illicit house of worship in the northern kingdom, accuses Amos of sedition and tells him to cease and desist. But Amos replies, your wife will be a prostitute and your children will be killed. When you see this happen, the rest of you know that the rest of what I said is true too. Then Amos is shown a basket full of summer fruit. The kind of fruit you have is determined by the kind of tree it comes from, right? Israel's judgment is a result of the evil they have sown, abuse of the poor, idolatry and contempt of the covenant coming to fruition. I will turn your feasts into mourning, your songs into lamentations. Every last person shall be judged, no matter where they hide or flee to. I will fix my eyes upon them for evil and not for good, because they despised my grace and ignored my favor. Thankfully, Yahweh promises at the end to rebuild the fallen tent of David's house, restoring it to the way it was in its heyday. The day will come, he says, when the plowman will pass the reaper, and those who tread grapes will pass by those sowing seeds. And the mountains shall flow with delicious wine, and cities and gardens will be restored, and I will never uproot them again. God will put an end to evil. Furthermore, he will make the land whole and the people well again.